Hello everyone. Today I wanted to discuss uh, perineal tendon injuries. The perineal tendons are two very important tendons that run on the outside part of the ankle. And what they do is they essentially move the foot towards the outside. There are two major instances when these uh, tendons can be injured. Um, one of the most common is following a severe ankle sprain. Uh, a less common uh, situation is when uh, patients have particularly high arches and uh, those who have high arches may notice that they tend to walk more on the outside part of the feet. And what that determines is a chronic stretch of the tendons that run on the outside part of the ankle. And that chronic stretch and um, overload can lead to inflammation and tearing and degeneration of the tendons. Uh, so how do you address a perineal tendon uh, injury? Uh, first of all, getting uh, weight-bearing x-rays of the uh, foot and ankle is very important to assess the alignment of the foot. Because if the alignment of the foot is particularly off, again, as of a particularly uh, significant uh, high um, arch alignment, then uh, in case surgery is needed, addressing the tendons alone may not be enough and you may have to add some sort of uh, foot realignment at the same time to prevent um, re-injury. The first uh, approach is uh, physical therapy. The physical therapy consists um, mostly of two uh, exercises. One is to strengthen those peroneal tendons and the other one is called proprioception and it's basically teaching the foot how to adapt to the ground and particularly to uneven surfaces. Um, ice locally as well as some oral anti-inflammatories can also be uh, helpful in um, attenuating the pain. I do not recommend any sort of cortisone injection uh, in or around the tendons as this may actually uh, worsen the degeneration of the tendon tear. It's certainly very effective in temporarily addressing the pain, but you may actually be creating more um, uh, damage to the tendon. Uh, as far as um, platelet-rich uh, plasma injections are concerned, also known as PRP or uh, stem cells, uh, the evidence in the literature is not that um, strong. So even though they certainly do not cause uh, any injury, uh, any potential injury to the tendons uh, like cortisone, uh, we don't know how well they can actually help the tendon repair. But it certainly doesn't cause any damage. The downside is it's typically out of pocket and each injection can be quite, a, quite costly, even around $1,000, $1,500. Uh, so you've got to be a little uh, cautious uh, with that and be wary of um, uh, promises that can be made uh, to you in terms of the effectiveness of these injections. Uh, patients with uh, particularly high arches may also benefit from uh, inserts in the shoes that help uh, correct a little bit of that um, high arch, which is uh, overloading the tendons. And that can help uh, the tendon seal on their own. Typically, I tell patients, listen, give it about uh, six to eight weeks of non-operative treatments. If the pain doesn't get better, then I certainly recommend getting an uh, MRI to uh, better investigate uh, the tendons. And at that point, uh, you can start discussing surgery. Uh, if you only have a tendon lesion without uh, a, a problem of foot alignment, then you can just repair those tendons. Once you repair those uh, tendons, I usually keep patients uh, off the foot uh, for about two weeks. And then at two weeks, I get them uh, walking either in, um, in a boot, one of those surgical boots, or um, sometimes even in a sneaker with a brace. And at about two weeks, patients start uh, some physical therapy. Um, the overall healing uh, can take even up to a year, uh, but I feel that most patients feel that they're doing uh, pretty well already by uh, four months after the procedure. In terms of uh, resuming uh, physical activities, it really depends on the extent of the tear, the location of the tear, and the level of activities. But usually low impact activities, you can start pretty early on, uh, also about six weeks um, after the procedure. 
uh, whereas higher impact activities, um, I typically recommend to wait at least three months after the uh, surgery. If you have uh, a perineal tendon injury with an associated uh, cavus foot deformity or particularly high arches, then you may need to add some bone cuts to uh, better align uh, the foot. And this will not only help you heal better, but it will prevent uh, recurrent tears uh, of the tendons. Um, the possible complications of surgery are really those um, of any surgical procedure. So you can go from uh, skin uh, healing problems to skin uh, infection to the tendons uh, re-tearing. Uh, um, uh, there can be uh, a blood clot um, which is, uh, thank God, particularly rare. Um, there can be what's called a chronic regional pain syndrome, um, and this can affect uh, typically uh, women uh, past middle age, uh, especially those that have a history of anxiety and depression. They tend to have a condition where uh, almost like the, all the nerves in the foot and ankle become really irritated and you get this 24-7 uh, constant pain. Um, again, thank God it's not a particularly common uh, complication, but it certainly can happen. Another potential um, problem is uh, injury to a, a sensory nerve that runs uh, close to the perineal tendons. If the uh, tendon gets uh, injured, you may have temporary or permanent numbness on the side of the foot. Uh, this typically does not affect uh, your function, uh, but it can just be... Um, uh, certainly a little annoying uh, to have just this numbness on the outside of the foot, but it's not going to cause you uh, to limp. The overall success rate of perineal tendon repair is about 85 uh, to 90 percent, uh, depending on the extent of the tear. Uh, the success rate is uh, lower the more uh, uh, severe the tear is, or if both tendons are torn. Uh, then you're certainly looking at a higher uh, failure rate of the uh, surgical uh, procedure. Um, so I encourage you, uh, if you're having uh, pain over those tendons, patients typically uh, complain of pain on the outside part of the uh, uh, ankle, uh, go see your orthopedic uh, foot and ankle uh, surgeon for an uh, evaluation. And again, uh, in my opinion, the most important thing to get are weight-bearing x-rays. Uh, of the foot and the ankle, and the MRI may not necessarily have to be uh, a test to be taken um, right off the bat. Uh, physical examination of the foot many times is sufficient to make the diagnosis. Take care.